Nationalism in Finland Finland is a country 130,596 square miles large and is inhabited by 5.4 million people. It stands in the northeastern section of Europe with a large amount of its country actually being north of the Arctic Circle. Over the course of its history, Finland has gone from a Swedish territory to a Grand Duchy of Russia and finally to its own independent nation. As an independent nation, Finland has risen to the top of world ranks in regards to education, freedom of press, stability, and technological advancement. The first concepts of Finnish territory and language emerged over the course of the first millennia AD. Language was comprised of three major dialects, proper Finnish, Karelian primarily in the west, and then finally, Tavastian in the southern tip of the country. In the early stages of Finnish national development, the Finnish word for Finland, or Suomi, actually only applied to the land occupied by proper Finns. The extension and consolidation of the Finnish label would eventually come after long periods of foreign rule. Up until the year 1150, Finnish populations had gone without any sort of unification, especially under any sort of formal rule. The year 1150, however, marked the beginning of Swedish Crusades moving into Finland, their goals being to expand their territory while also converting the pagan population. Eventually, by the end of the 13th century, all of proper Finland, Karelia, and Tavastia would fall into Swedish hands under the leadership of Berger Jarl and his massive Swedish army. After the Swedish crown had solidified their rule over Finland, the kings then made sure that Christianity took hold in the country as well. Finland was given its own diocese and even brought under special protection of Pope Innocent IV. The next few centuries were marked by peace and stability under Swedish rule. Countless Swedish noblemen actually immigrated to Finland, mostly living right along the Finnish coastline, building up ports and trade in these areas. Despite being vastly outnumbered by a majority of Finns in the population, the Swedish noblemen in Finland exercised a great amount of authority over their Finnish counterparts. The course of Finnish nationalism would once again be greatly changed by the Swedes when in 1527 King Gustav Vasa would reform the church in Sweden, joining the Protestant ranks of other northern European countries. This change would be supplemented by the translation of the New Testament into Finnish, by the Bishop of Turku himself, Mikhail Agricola. Now embroiled in a huge ideological battle in the name of Protestantism, the Swedish crown's grip over Finland increased immensely. Swedish authorities drastically increased taxes, implemented drafts, and even established military rule in order to supplement the Swedish expansion of borders across the continent. Swedish oppression of the Finns reached its breaking point in the aftermath of the Russo-Swedish War that ended in 1595. By 1596, an all-out peasant rebellion had been sparked. The uprising, also known as the Kudra War, was quickly put down by the Swedish nobility and over by 1597. The conflict marked a major step for Finnish nationalism, however, because members of all three dialects were able to unite under one cause. Remaining under Swedish control, the Finns were once again drawn into another conflict. This time, Finnish forces fought under Gustavus Adolphus in the name of Protestantism in the Thirty Years' War that spanned for the first half of the 17th century. The war proved to be a watershed for nationalism across the European continent. And while the question of Finnish independence was never addressed, the Finnish army was able to formalize itself with the creation of an organized light cavalry known as the Haka Polita. The aftermath of the Thirty Years' War would bring a much needed period of peace to Finland. However, it would be greatly defined by the onset of the Little Ice Age. The weather would get so harsh that the Finnish ports would eventually freeze over and result in a major famine killing one third of the population in 1696. The national narrative of Finland would soon change drastically with the outbreak of the Great Northern War in the year 1700. The war would mark the beginning of a series of conflicts between Sweden and Russia that would span the course of a century and culminate in 1809 with the Russian victory over Sweden in the Finnish War. Finland was reconstituted as a Grand Duchy of Finland 
with the Grand Duke being Tsar Alexander I of Russia. Russian rule allowed Finnish nationalism to thrive. Desperate to pull the Finns' loyalty away from the Swedish, the Russians conceded many different aspects of culture to the Finns, the most vital of which was the extension of the Finnish language from the peasantry to the middle and upper classes of Finland. Additionally, in 1835, Kalevala, the Finnish national epic, was published and distributed. The book consisted of folk tales, legends, and myths of Finnish history. More importantly, however, it gave the Finnish people a common narrative, which would later become the rallying cry for nationalism in the 20th century. Fast developing Finnish universities also began producing the country's first batch of intelligentsia. A Finnish philosopher by the name of Johann Wilhelm Snellman would go on to be the founder of the Phenomenian movement, who, while still loyal to the Russian Tsar, pressed for the countrywide use of Finnish in schools. The 19th century also brought massive amounts of industrialization to Finland. While Finnish industry was relatively small when compared to Germany or the United States, it was able to exploit its status as a duchy exporting large amounts of Finnish goods to the vast Russian Empire lying directly in the east. The expanding Finnish economy would also supplement the growth of major Finnish cities, the largest of which, Helsinki, would eventually become Finland's capital. By the end of the 19th century, Finnish national identity had become so strong that Tsar Nicholas II felt the need for a change. Complete Russification would be the new goal in Finland. The February Manifesto of 1899 undermined the authority of the Diet of Finland that had been in existence since 1809. The Language Manifesto of 1900 made Russian the administrative language of the country. Lastly, a conscription law forced Finnish men to join the Russian army, fighting in the Russo-Japanese War and also World War I. The doctrine of Russification, however, was quickly dropped by 1905 with the combination of the Russian Revolution in 1905 at home along with the general strike going on in Finland. Finnish strikers advocated for the institution of major liberal reforms. By 1906, the old Russian diet was replaced by the Parliament of Finland. The new parliament not only gave Finland great autonomy in the face of Russia, but also made Finland the first country in Europe to give women the vote through universal suffrage. Finland received its chance at independence with the onset of the Russian Revolution. Claiming that their union with Russia ended with the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II, the Finnish Senate elected Oskari Tokoy as the country's prime minister. The provisional government of Russia dissolved the Finnish parliament after this declaration. But by October 1917, the Bolsheviks had taken power over Russia. The Bolshevik leader, Vladimir Lenin, supported national self-determination. And by December 1917, Finland had fully gained its independence from Russia. Independence, however, would quickly lead to violence by the year 1918. The civil war broke out between the anti-socialist whites, predominantly in the north, and the pro-socialist reds, predominantly in the south. The whites would eventually prove victorious at the cost of 37,000 lives. Initially, they desired a constitutional monarchy with a German prince as king. However, with Kaiser Wilhelm's abdication, Finland became a republic. Subsequent elections elected Carlo Juho Stahlberg as Finland's first president, solidifying both the future for capitalism and democracy in the country. Apart from a failed proto-fascist coup in 1932 known as the Montsala Rebellion, the next 20 years of Finnish history would be marked by peace and prosperity. This, however, would drastically change in 1939, when Joseph Stalin agreed to divvy up Eastern Europe with Hitler in the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Finland fell into the Soviet sphere of influence and was quickly invaded by a massive Soviet force. Surprisingly enough, the Finnish defenses held out against the massive Soviet hordes. And while Finland would eventually lose Karelia to the Soviet Union, the country itself would manage to keep its independence. After the Winter War, Finnish forces would team up with Nazi Germany and take the fight to the Soviet Union. Finns, like their German allies, however, would end up on the losing end of World War II, never gaining the full territory of Karelia back. Exhausted from war, the Finns made a point to stay neutral in the Cold War. Though the country never joined the Warsaw Pact, 
Finland appeased the Soviet Union by fostering a relatively pro-Soviet sentiment within Finnish media, even censoring criticisms of the Soviet government. In fact, the intimidation of a smaller nation by a neighboring strong nation came to be known as Finlandization. Nevertheless, Finland's Cold War neutrality allowed it to be the location for mediation, allowing for both the first strategic arms limitation talks and also the Helsinki Accords to occur within their country. Maintaining peace in the second half of the 20th century allowed for Finland to transform from a completely agrarian society to a booming industrial economy. The creation of a state-sponsored educational system with no tuition also allowed technological advancement to prosper. Additionally, in the 30 years after World War II, Finland followed in the footsteps of its Nordic neighbors through the creation of a substantial welfare system, including unemployment insurance, medical insurance, maternity benefits, free child care, and even national pensions. In 1992, after a long debate and a slight recession, Finland finally voted to join the EU, officially replacing the Finnish marka with the euro. Even with its EU membership, Finland has continued to be one of the world's most prosperous countries. Furthermore, it's become a world hub for technology, housing such world-renowned companies as Nokia and Rovio, creator of one of the most popular video games of all time, Angry Birds. In the end, Finland is a country whose national identity built up over the course of thousands of years. And yet, it has been completely independent for less than 100 of those years. It's never had the largest army, the biggest economy, or the loudest leaders. But Finland has somehow managed to, in the course of less than a century, rise to world prominence. And with its relatively homogeneous population, combined with its strong nationalistic core, this global status doesn't look to be changing anytime soon.